And I am going to get out of the screen or the blog screen. Get to the blog screen. Good morning. Same Hopefully blog. everybody's uh, got a great night or night's rest and you're all... It's Friday. I mean, that's amazing, right? That's, that's a good thing. Uh, let's see. i got to try to find where the live post went on our Facebook page. Uh, right there. Like, share. Oscar came on. What's up, Oscar? The dedicated fan. Good He's looking for a book morning. this week we didn't have. Well, it was already promised to somebody. So. Yeah. Uh, Friday... F O C live. I'm going to share that to the Colorado comic book enthusiasts, to the Rocky Mountain comic book fans, and Colorado Toy and Comic Society. Boom. There goes that dynamite, Dom. Watch, my watch party. Watch party. Yeah, so you can watch my watches. Watch your watch. Look watch, my watch. Party. I got to watch. You want to watch my watch? Put something. Plug my something. phone in here because it's about to die. Oh, I just plugged the iPad into that. Oh, you, you can take it out. I'll do it. I'll do it. So it's uh, it's Friday, it's Friday, and it is time for final order cutoff roundup, or FOC for short. Fuck, fuck roundup. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm John. I'm Dom. We're gonna walk you through all of the titles that are on uh, FOC this Monday. But uh, before we do that, I'm gonna let Dom take it away with a short little intro video, yeah. and we'll see. We're live. Boom. How about that? Uh, first off, I have to say thanks to everybody who, who joins us. I know it's early. It's I mean, it's not really early. It's 1145, so it's almost noon on Friday. Oh, God. It's so creepy. <laughs> um, we hope you guys get some information out of this video. Um, we do post this video, you know, we do it live right now on Facebook, but it also gets posted to YouTube. We have 91 subscribers on our YouTube channel, this which is, is awesome. Uh, we need nine more to make that, and even 100. Once we hit 100 subscribers on YouTube, we can change our URL to make it something way more easy to get to uh, and say, because right now it's it sounds like it's a, a Klingon venereal disease yeah something I like know. that I got nothing. it's not good it's not good but, so, uh, but we we ask you please go to our if you go to youtube.com whatever you know how to get there uh look for hall of justice final order cutoff it should come up in something subscribe hit the bell hit the bell so you get notifications yeah. when new videos We'd get like posted to rename that badly yes very much so uh and we want to do more videos too right you know we did the drawer box assembly video we want to do a cgc one yeah how to submit a, CGC how to submit book. a book to cgc so. but you know if you've got suggestions let us know because we're always looking you know i don't know what you want to know about and i don't know that until you tell me what you want to know about and then we can try to let you know about that stuff right. so you got to let us know what you want to know i just so can't, we can let, I you can't know. let them know about comic book pressing no that's, that's a, a secret. secret that's, that's a that's, secret uh, thing dom had to go there was a whole like robed ceremony uh they took him into the basement of some place downtown in denver and initiated him into the comic book pressing club that's right. uh there was flogging and things that were involved so <laughs> it's it's not something that we want to make light of right. but uh anyway uh let's get to it so final order cutoff is something that we as a comic book store do every single week uh and it happens on monday foc the deadline to get all of these adjustments in, final order cutoff, is our last chance to adjust our numbers on books that are coming out, usually about a month before they show up. Um, and so that's that's your opportunity, again, to tell us exactly what you want so that we can have that here for you in your pull box. Um, eventually, this will all be kind of automated once... Uh, previews pull box becomes live because we're going to use that software so you can do all these adjustments from your phone we'll get a notification on our end and we just have to approve all of those things which is really cool it is cool but in prep to get there we're trying to do these videos to kind of help you through the process to let you know how it works because if i don't have your order for whatever cool cover uh that's on foc on monday uh, you have to come in and hope that we have copies off of the rack to grab off of the rack. So that doesn't happen very often because people we sell out quick. We do, you know. It's it's it's, it's something where we're always 
taking a look at numbers, we're taking a look at sell through because the last thing that I want to do is add to the stuff that we have in the boxes here at the store. Um, you know, we've already, we've got, we try to, we try to keep really good back issue stuff out there and it gets kind of clogged up by all the new releases that, that managed to get in there. It's, it's just the nature of the beast, but, yeah. uh, we're trying to get the, the tools into your hands so that you guys can let us know exactly what it is that you want. Exactly. That's what this is all about. All about you, the people. It's all about you, the super friends who hang out with us and, and support us and all that good stuff. So, That's uh, diehard fan. <laughs> we do. I, I like them. They're, yeah. they're pretty rad. Let's get into this. Uh, okay, so all of the, all the stuff that we're going to cover right now is on final order cutoff this Monday. Most of the titles that we're going to go over are shipping out that will be in stores on January 8th of 2020. That's next year, which is crazy. Uh, some of them are a little later, but they have, because of what they're doing, they have uh, they need extra lead time to produce the books. And so, you know, it's on FOC a little earlier. So uh, the way that this is going to work, if you guys would like to subscribe to any of the stuff that you're going to see in this video, please comment sub with the title. Uh, and we will get that book added to your hold slot so that you get uh, the subsequent issues of that series. Uh, if you just want to pull a copy because you're not sure, you don't want to commit to anything, you don't want to commit to the next two issues possibly, uh, you can just comment pull with the title, the cover, and the quantity. Uh, because some of this stuff is going to have multiple covers. Sometimes people want more than one copy of a yep. book. Um, so if you, if you want to just pull a copy, comment pull with the title, the cover that you would like, and the quantity that you would like to order. And as, like I said, as long as we get that order in by Monday, you're golden. All right? Uh, so that's how it works. First up, from our friends at Dark Horse, uh, we have Stranger Things. So this is the third miniseries that Stranger Things has done. They're kind of keeping up. They're, they're taking the Hellboy model of publishing comic books, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, and rather than having one big series, they're doing these tiny little miniseries that are glimpses into the world of the Stranger Things universe. So uh, this is Stranger Things Into the Fire, number one. It's a four-issue miniseries. Years after escaping Hawkins' lab, two of Dr. Brenner's former subjects seek to live normal lives. When news reaches them that the lab was shut down, they go on a harrowing search for Nine, a powerful pyrokinetic whose shattered psyche threatens to burn them all to ashes if they can't find her and free her from her own malevolent imagination. Uh, this is written by Jody Hauser. Wow. Uh, yeah, we've got three covers for this one. That, so they, they took one away. They used to do four covers with the photo cover being the fourth. Uh, but cover A on my side is by Viktor Kalavichev. Uh, cover B on Dom's side is by Kyle Lambert. And he might look familiar because he did the Buffy Hellmouth cover. That's what it looks like. Um, and then cover C on my side is by Jeremy Wilson. So four issue miniseries, Stranger Things, Into the Fire. There will be three covers for each of the issues. Cover A, cover B, cover C. Uh, let us know what you want. If you would like that added to your subscription or if you would just like to pull a copy, uh, we can make that happen for you. All right? Moving on. From DC this week, in stores on January 8th, we have Batman number 86. And this is important because we have a new creative team that's taking over on Batman. Uh, Tony S. Daniel is doing the, uh, the artwork as well as the interior artwork, and you've got James Tinian that's taking over writing. That's uh, be good. Yeah, it I should like be. Tinian. And the, this, the story for this sounds amazing. Uh, it's a new day in Gotham, but not the same old Batman. With Bane vanquished and one of his longtime allies gone, Batman has to start picking up the pieces and stepping up his game. Batman has a new plan for Gotham City, but he's not the only one. Deathstroke has returned as well under a mysterious new contract that could change everything. Uh, so the main cover on my side is by Tony Daniel. The variant cover on Dom's side is by none other than Francesco Mattina, and it's fantastic. Uh, if you would like to jump on to Batman, if you had a, if you weren't sure what a good jumping on point would be, this is it right here, number 86. It gets you past all the Tom King stuff. It gives you a fresh, you know, jump in point, uh, and you get Tony Daniel drawn Batman, which is always phenomenal so uh cover a cover b let us know if you want to add it to your subscription you can comment sub or if you just want to pull a copy you can just comment pull with whether you want the a cover or the b cover okay next up from dc we have another one there's actually two giants that are on foc this week this is the birds of prey giant 
of course it's it's timely a very timely fashion because we've got the Movie? the birds of prey posters that just came out this week i think there was a new trailer also a trailer maybe out, yeah uh, and the movie's coming out in February, so uh, get get in on the ground for, floor with some Birds of Prey. The way these giants work, there's always uh, there's a new story, and then there's a bunch of reprint stories in it. And so this one has this new story called Fight or Flight, which is a 16-page Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey story written by Gail Simone with art by Inaki Miranda. When a new hospital collapses into a sinkhole in the middle of Gotham City, Harley tries to convince Huntress and Black Canary to investigate, but can the Birds of Prey really trust the clown princess of crime, or do Harley's true allegiances lie elsewhere? Um, so that's the 16-page new story that's in this book, nice. and then it's also got a bunch of reprints from older things. Uh, but they're really working Harley into the Birds of Prey, which is interesting. Yeah. Because um, that's not that's not where she started. That's She was never really a part of the Birds of Prey. She was a, a part of the Gotham City Sirens. Canary, Huntress, any of us? Uh, Oracle, usually. Easy Oracle? Yep. Uh, mm. But anyway. I wonder why they went to going this route. Well... Because it's Harley. Yeah, because it's Harley. And it Harley sells. Harley that's right. Uh, okay, so that's one of the giants. Up next, we've got the uh, the second giant that's on FOC this week. This is Crisis on Infinite Earths, giant number one. Also uh, succinctly timed because of the Crisis on Infinite Earths uh, on the CW thing. And you can see you've got Supergirl, you've got Arrow, you've got uh, Felicity, you've got Flash, you've got Kid Flash, and the Ray. Is the Ray on the TV show? The Ray. That's the guy, well, he's straight back at the very back of that cover next to Supergirl. That yeah, that guy. I don't know. know. If, I, I don't know. If the, I, I'm so behind on it. Yeah, I'm behind on uh, it. Too. But anyway, this, uh, it's, it, it, again, this, there's a, a new story, a 16 page new story, actually 24 pages of new stories, plus a bunch of classic reprints. Uh, you've got on the cover, you have Superman holding Supergirl from the original Crisis. Um, so that should be a cool book to pick oh, up, and it's four. That. It's four ninety nine. It's four ninety nine for a hundred pages of comic books. Same thing with the Birds of Prey. Do this more often with all the comic books. <coughs> I agree. Them and, and they sell. Just... They sell. Okay. Next up from DC, as part of the Hill House imprint on DC's Black Label, we have Daphne Byrne, number one of six. Uh, in the gaslit splendor of late 19th century New York, rage builds inside 14-year-old Daphne, as it does inside in, any 14-year-old. Yeah, uh, the sudden death of her father has left her alone with her irresponsible, grief-stricken mother, who becomes easy prey for a group of occultists promising to contact her dead husband. While fighting to disentangle her mother from these charlatans, Daphne brings to sense a strange, insidious presence in her own body, an entity with unspeakable appetites. Wow. Maybe she's just hungry. Maybe, yeah. you know. Got a piece of cheese in the fridge. Get a Snickers. Have a yeah, Snickers, Snickers, Daphne, Snickers, you know. Snickers satisfied. Uh, what does brother want, and could she even stop him if she tried? Writer Laura Marks from TV's Ray Donovan. I haven't seen that show, I've but I hear it's amazing. Either. They say The uh, Expanse is good, too. The Expanse and the Good Fight and horror art legend Kelly Jones, people. Who did uh, all of the my favorite Batmans with the crazy long pointy ears and of course Red Rain Batman uh, joined forces to unleash spirits from beyond into the Hill House comics line. Main cover on my side is by Gerald Jablonski. I'm not kidding. That's the guy's name. It's a uh, great cover. Though. It is. It's freaking it creepy, me of, man. Reminds uh, me of Nosferatu. Yes. And sitting on the back. Yep. Yeah. Uh, variant cover on Dom's side is by the one and only Yasmin Putri. That's good one. Uh, six issue miniseries, Daphne Byrne, one through six, issue one on FOC on Monday. Uh, next up from DC, we get Harley and Ivy number five. Uh, and I have to point this out because the variant covers for this are fantastic. I mean, you know the spiel. It's, it's number five of six. Uh, Harley and Ivy have had it up to here with the Florian Florionic Man's attacks, and now they're ready to bring the fight to him. The only problem is they don't know where to find him, so they seek out the help of Batwoman, who's hesitant to believe in the good intentions of former villains. <laughs> Will Harley and Ivy convince Batwoman that they can be trusted in time to save their own skins from the Florionic Man? Didn't they just uh, have Swamp Thing? Yeah, right? You couldn't to find him, like, almost instantly? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, Jason Woodrow as the Florionic Man is kind of the same thing. He's, you know... Did you watch the Swamp Thing show on? I didn't know. I didn't okay. go away through it. Because he was, he was the big bad for that oh, series, okay. which okay, is pretty okay. cool. But, uh, but Florianic Man's a bad guy, so and Swamp Thing's a good guy, and they, right. they go around from time to time. Uh, main cover right here is by Mikkel Janin. 
Uh, the variant covers, however, are connecting, and they're by the one and only Mr. Josh Middleton. That's, so, those are good. yeah, those are good. I don't know about Harley's expression. I mean, she looks like she, she is psycho, just man. freaking thrilled to smash you with a hammer. She is, though. Uh, you're right. You're absolutely right. So, Josh Middleton connecting covers for Harley and Ivy number five. If you're not already, if you don't have that all figured out yet, let us know if you'd like to pull a copy uh, of the main cover or the two variants. We'll make that happen for you in your hold slot. Okay? All right. Uh, this is the most important thing we're going to talk about this week, though. This next book. Um, Wonder Woman is hitting her epic 750th issue. And, and so what this is, this is basically a list, just like they did for Action Comics and Detective Comics. Uh, they're publishing a $10 100-page comic book that has different covers based on Wonder Woman throughout the decades. Um, so again, this is nine dollars and ninety nine cents for the for the book, regardless of the cover. Wow, uh, some names on there. Yeah, the names on here are fantastic. Basically, everybody who's ha had a hand in creating Diana's look, with the exception of one, throughout the years, uh, has a cover that's going on here. Uh, in stores January twenty second. It's going to be prestige format, so it's square bound, just like Action and Detective one thousand were. Um, an all-star 96-page celebration of the Amazon Princess by longtime favorites and acclaimed new voices. In the lead story, Wonder Woman's epic Year of the Villain battle comes to a close, leading the way to new challenges ahead. Additionally, this oversized gem tells tales from Diana's past, present, and future by some of the greatest storytellers in the business, including Colleen Duran, Mariko Tamaki, the Teen Titans Raven team writer of Cami Garcia and Gabriel Piccolo, and legendary Wonder Woman creators returning to the character, including Gail Simone and Greg Rucka. Okay? So we're going to run through these covers with you. Uh, just remember, they're all 10 bucks a piece. If you want them all, let us know. If you want to pick and choose, let us know. Uh, the main cover right here, it's of course, it's missing trade dress. All of these things will have trade dress, right. and hopefully they will be uh, mirroring the trade dress of the books from that era. Because people that's, that don't know what trade dress is, what that's, is trade dress? Trade dress is like on the, on the Josh Middleton cover b beside Dom. Uh, trade dress means that it's it's not just the art. It has the logo. It has the title. It has the publisher logo. It has the creator contents, uh, a barcode, and usually the price. So that's what we call trade dress. So none of the books are going to look like this because these are tech these would technically be virgin variants. Yeah. Uh, they will all have the hopefully the correct period trade dress right. uh, for the title and based on what it looked like when it was being published. So. Uh, main cover on my side is by Joelle Jones, who's writing and drawing Catwoman and is fantastic. Uh, variant cover on Dom's side is the 1940s cover by Josh Middleton. Yes. Then on my side, if we want to pump up one, that's uh, the 50s cover by Jenny Frizen, which is, I, I like it. Uh, 60 covers, we have J. Scott Campbell. In the 60s, Diana took a weird turn where she... Uh, that's pretty fantastic. She though, she lost the the red, white, and blue, and the the stars, and she went to kind of a more. She was a secret agent and had like jumpsuits and stuff like that. Huh. So Campbell's cover kind of epitomizes that era of Wonder Woman in the '60s. Uh, the '70s is by Oliver Coipel, uh, and it's it's solid right here. Coming up, yeah, that one right there is the '70s. That's solid. It's on my side. Uh, the '80s, of course, was divined by none other than George Perez. So on Dom's side, you've got the the George Perez cover for the 1980s. Um, 1990s, Brian Bolland, you know, who was doing the covers during that time frame. Um, I, I have to say that's probably my least favorite of them, just because it looks like she's got a headache. Yeah. But uh, '90s cover by Brian Bolland. 2000s on Dom's side by the one and only Mr. Adam Hughes, uh, which is fantastic. And then the 20, two, they're calling it the 2001s, uh, God, which is Jim Lee. And of course, um, we, we, yesterday we only had the pencils. Uh, DC tweeted that Scott Williams was in the middle of inking the book, and so this is the inked cover. It will ship out uh, fully colored with trade dress, but the Jim Lee cover is the 2001s, technically. That's so cool. uh, let us know. This book comes out January 22nd. Uh, if you want all of them, let us know. If you would like to pick and choose, let us know. But it's, it sounds like it's going to be an absolute blast. And if you've read Action or De Detective 1000, those books were phenomenal. They're anthology books. So they've got a lot of small stories from different creative teams that are just fantastic. So Very cool. That's the big deal this week. 
Uh, next from IDW this week in stores on January 15th is Rising Sun, number one of three. Uh, Chiyoko of the Koi clan leads a group of powerful warriors, the best each clan has to offer, on a mission to save Japan from dragons and monsters. <laughs> but perhaps the greatest threat she faces is not the many monsters who are ravaging the country, but her own team. Hmm. That sounds pretty cool. Uh, Three-issue miniseries from the folks at IDW. Cover price is $4.99 for issue number one. If you just like to pull a copy because you like Japanese lore and history and fighting dragons and stuff, let us know. <coughs> Excuse me. If you would like all three series, comment, subscribe, and we'll get that added onto your old slot. Okay? From Image this week, we have a new number one in stores January 8th. Uh, it is a, it's a mini-series. However, they didn't give me how long this mini-series was going to be. So maybe six, maybe four, I don't know. Uh, from Matt Hawkins and Colleen Duran, we have Clock, The Clock, number one. Uh, within three weeks, hundreds of millions of healthy people worldwide contract, contract various forms of aggressive cancer and the proliferation seemingly a viral outbreak stumps the best scientific minds available. But after a leading cancer researcher loses his wife and watches his nine-year-old daughter begin to succumb to the same illness, he must race against the clock to end a global conspiracy that could propel the world straight into World War III or worse. So that sounds pretty, that sounds pretty intense, man. Yeah, you've got the biohazard sign on there wrapped up in what looks like a tree. Um, so if you want to pull a copy, make sure you comment pull just to read it, see what it's about. If you'd like to subscribe to Clock, comment sub Clock, and we'll get it uh, get it added to your pull, your subscription. All right, now we got we got some Marvel stuff coming up here. There's a lot of one shots again, which is super frustrating. But uh, first up, we have Marvel's Avengers Thor number one. Uh, this again, this continues their tie-ins to the upcoming video game. It's just a one-shot uh, leading into the Marvel's Avengers with a new story. Um, with when the God of Thunder uses his mighty Mjolnir to aid Tony Stark with his latest experiment, why does this lead to an unexpected Asgardian encounter and a one-on-one -on -one battle between Thor and the Green Gamma Goliath known as the Hulk? It is all as it seems, or is an ancient enemy planting seeds of distrust that will bloom into the disassembling of the Avengers? Uh, main cover on my side is by Stonehouse. The variant cover on Dom's side is by Ron Lim. Just a one-shot, $4.99. Uh, if you want it added to your pull, we can't subscribe you to these things because they're all one-shots. But like I said, we've already gone over, I think, Tony Stark and Captain America, yes. I believe. So this is the third of these one-shots that are leading into the new Avengers game. Uh, next from Marvel's from Marvel and in stores on January 8th, we have Marvel's X number one of six. Uh, this is a prequel to the legendary Earth X trilogy that uh, the Alex Ross and Jim Kruger did oh so many years ago. Uh, David has a problem. He lives in a world of monsters that would love to devour him. He's the last boy on Earth, the last human being on Earth, and these creatures that see him only as prey, they're his former neighbors. He has one hope, to get to New York, to get to where Captain America and the rest of the heroes are. Uh, Alex Kruger and Jim, or Alex Ross and Jim Kruger combine their abilities with artist Well B, I guess that's his or her name, to tell a very uncanny prequel to the legendary Earth X trilogy. So I have no sales data on Earth X because that happened a long time ago. So if you would like to subscribe to this series, please let us know. We will be going very light for the racks, just like we did uh, for the Marvel's uh, epilogue series. Um, just because I don't, I don't know. I need you to tell me if you want this book on your subscription. Uh, I haven't had, I don't think, any requests for it as of yet. Uh, maybe, so maybe that all changed. Today. Yeah, if you if you want to know what happened, the prequel to the Earth X trilogy, uh, get this thing on your subscription. Let us know. Comment sub Marvel's X, and we'll get that added to your poll. Uh, next up from Marvel in stores, January eighth, we have Miles Morales: The End, number one. Uh, this is going to kick off a series of these The End one-shots that are basically telling the last story of these characters. So, Miles is the first. This is the last, this is the final Miles Morales story. Uh, humanity makes its last stand in the only place strong enough to survive, which is Brooklyn. Former Spider-Man Miles Morales leads the bastion of civilization into the future. Uh, penned by Miles Morales author Saladin Ahmed, 
This is $4.99. It's just a one shot. Main cover on my side is by Raza, and the variant cover on Dom's side is by Damien Scott, who is the interior artist for this book. Both good, man. I like <coughs> Raza stuff. I do too, because you see his beard peeking out of the peeking out of the cape right there. He's just got the, the smallest little trace of this white goatee beard. So he's old. That's old man Spider-Man right old there. Man Spider-Man. Old man Spider-Man. Okay, next up from Marvel, we have Ruins of Ravencroft. So this is going to be a series of one-shots and a new mini-series uh, surrounding the criminally insane... It's basically you know Arkham for Marvel Universe, the Ravencroft Institute. Uh, in the aftermath of Absolute Carnage, the Marvel Universe still needs a place to treat and rehabilitate the criminally insane... And efforts to reconstruct Ravencroft are, Croft are well underway. But Ravencroft is no ordinary facility and untold secrets may yet be waiting to be unearthed in the destruction Carnage left after his attack on the facility. $4.99. The main cover on my side is by Gerardo Sandoval. The variant cover on Dom's side with a... Uh, that, that looks like the worst Thanksgiving ever. That Pilgrim's just infecting yeah. people with a Carnage symbiote. Uh, by Ariel Olivetti. So... Just a one-shot. There's going to be a few of these one-shots that we're going to go over in the coming weeks. And then there is a Ravencroft miniseries that's going to be coming out. So if any of that sounds of interest to you, please let us know. Because, again, uh, I don't want to auto-sub everybody who is on Absolute Carnage to this. Because if you want it, tell me, and I'll get it for you. Um, it's 5 bucks. I think you're pr most people seem to be pretty burnt out with the five dollar one shots from absolute carnage <laughs> but if you want it let us know i'll, I'll gladly order it for you okay it, it ends here no, it, it no just kidding it's still going hold on please even heard it. but wait there's more i feel like billy mays from uh <laughs> you, just, you have to be addicted to cocaine that's, i'm not all that other stuff. And, and he's dead so and that's dead. yeah that's he's also dead. not good all right, uh, if any of you are reading Captain Marvel, you know all about this next character. Uh, Star is getting her own five-issue miniseries in stores on January 8th. Did you know she was born of the Reality Stone? Is that what it is? Yeah, born of the Reality Stone, the breakout Why character. She? I don't even want to say. If you uh, haven't read the issues of Captain Marvel to date, that yeah. are on the rack, holy crap, what a storyline. Good? Yeah. So you were a hater at first, I, but now I, they're I do not like, reeling you back I do not in. Like Carol Danvers. No. Just, it's not my character. Mine is the real Captain Marvel. Sure. That storyline was good. But it's a good story. And now it's into another storyline. Right. I don't know what's going on I don't with know Captain what's Marvel, yeah. but it's it's a cool story. So anyway, uh, the breakout character from Captain Marvel flies solo in a five-issue miniseries. Ambitious reporter Ripley Ryan rocked New York City when she became the hero star, adored by everyone. But in truth... <clears throat> she was Dr. Minerva's attempt at a Cree human super soldier. Dom, Dom, that just piqued Dom's interest a little bit. Yeah. Desperate for the strength to control her own destiny, she tried to kill Captain Marvel and failed. That's why Minerva was at the end. Okay. Ripley was left defeated and powerless in the raft, or so she thought. The Reality Stone has found her, and now no prison can hold her. You thought you knew what the Infinity Stones were capable of? Think again. Written by Kelly Thompson with art by Javier Pina. The main cover on my side is by Carmen Carnero, who's the artist on Captain Marvel. Uh, and a variant cover by Mr. J. J. Scott Campbell that is open to order. We don't have to qualify for it. So if you're interested in either of those covers or the series itself, uh, we'll probably auto-sub anyone who is on Captain Marvel to this since it's spinning out of that. Uh, if you aren't reading Captain Marvel, let us know if you would like to grab this, uh, whether it's a pull or a sub. We'll get it added for you, okay? We talked about this on the stream sale last night. Uh, in stores on January 29th, we have Wolverine vs. Sabretooth 3D number one. This is a it's a complete reprint of Wolverine number 10 from 1988. However, it's published in 3D, comes polybagged with a pair of glasses. And a, pair of, uh, and a headache. And a headache. Yes. If, if you don't like reading in 3D. Advil, yeah. go along with it. Uh, and they're not the 3D glasses like you get at the theater, because that would be cool. Be These cool. are the cheap old red and, red blue, and blue lens. Uh, but it's still cool. It's $7.99. It's just a one-shot. They've done this now with Amazing Spider-Man, and there was another 3D book. Uh, I think it was Mighty Thor number one, right around the time of War of the Realms. So... Uh, they're fun. We, we don't go crazy on them, but if you'd like a copy, let us know. Uh, it's not something that we can subscribe you to, so please comment. Pull Wolverine versus Saber 2 3D number one, and we'll get that added to you, to your pull. Okay, 
From Boom this week, we have a new one-shot in the realm of the Firefly world. We have Outlaw Ma Reynolds, number one, uh, which is $7.99, and it's bigger than normal, like most Boom uh, one-shots tend to be. Uh, after the shocking conclusion of Mal's journey with Boss Moon, Mal hands himself into the Alliance, but it turns out it's not him they want. The infamous Ma Reynolds is at the top of the Alliance's most wanted, and if Mal doesn't get to her first, the Alliance will. Kicking off a new year of Firefly, discover the secret history of Mal and his mother and what will mean what, what that will mean for the rest of the verse, and a new brewing war to end all wars, written by Greg Pak with art by David Gianfelice. Uh, the main cover on my side is by Ethan Young. There's also a variant cover by Ming Doyle, but we don't have the image for it's that. It's not there. It's not there. It's not uh, there. Just a one shot. But if you're on Serenity, we'll probably, or if you're on Firefly, we'll probably throw this in your box. Uh, if you would like to just read the story of Mal's mom, we can get that for you too as a pull. And that wraps it up, man. It's, it was kind of short, short and sweet. Show, uh, not a lot. I mean, it's it's a big week. Like I didn't get into all of it, as you can see. Below this image, uh, this is all, all this stuff that we're showing you back here is on our website. So if you go to hallofjusticecomics.com and click on the blog, you will find this post you know what, right John? here. I put this link at the top of this <coughs> thing so they can click on it and just go to it. Perfect. So. Um, but that way, when you're scrolling on the website and you see this, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, this giant column of text, this is the entirety of the list that I get to go through on Monday when I'm doing Final Order Cutoff. So look through this thing. Check out all of the stuff that's coming out. If you have questions like, what the heck is uh, the DC Essentials Flash Speed Force action figure? You find uh, out, huh? Or, yeah, I mean, you, go ahead. You pick something. DC you, Essentials, you pick. Uh, speed Force. Okay, so I'm going to highlight this. You grab that, uh, that November item code. That's all I, need. all I need is this. Yes. So we're going to grab that. Copy that speed. sucker. We're going to open up a web page and go into your Google search. Control V to paste. Paste that. Hit enter. Press enter. Boom. The oh, very, very first thing now. that's going to come up there is the listing on previewsworld.com, the DC Essentials Flash Speed Force action figure. Man, is it, he looks like he's transparent. He does. Right? That's freaking cool because he's in the Speed Force. That's cool. Um, but anything that's on that list, you guys have access to. We just trying to pick some of the things that we want to highlight, that we want to make you aware of. Uh, but there's a whole bunch of stuff there. So yeah. use that list, copy and paste that item code, uh, look it up on previews. And if you have questions, let us know. That's what we're here for. Um, this order is due Monday by 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. If your order comes in after that, you're unfortunately like I sent. I actually do FOC way earlier than 5 p.m., but we put that cutoff in there that way. If some some requests come in, I can have folks, I can have staff members do those orders for you uh, to get you the books that you want or the toys that you want. So, right. Uh, that's it. That wraps it up, man. Uh, catch us on YouTube. We're catch us on YouTube. To YouTube. Absolutely. You the show live. We need nine more subscribers, which is crazy. We're almost there. Very, very close. And yeah. let us know. Let us know what videos you want to see us make and uh, and be silly and dumb about. So that's exactly. That's right. that's what we're best at. Day in the life of Dom. That's right. Well, thanks for watching, right. gang. I appreciate it. Uh, you have all weekend to check this video out, either on Facebook or on our YouTube page. Uh, get your requests in by 5 p.m. Monday, Mountain Standard Time. And uh, we'll get you taken care of. I'm John. I'm Dom. Have a great weekend, guys. We'll see you later. Have a good one. I got some dirty shit to pick up at the drop clean. I got a tidy bitch to pick up. I got less Selena. Shady hop up in the whip, but I ain't never seen it. Shady love the way I whip it in a two-seater.